Well, hello everyone. Once again, new video. I promise it's not about the Segus exactly. It's more about technology that involves everything in electronics and even more retro gaming. In this video I will have a slight speech defect, not only because my English but uh, because I had my grill fixed, I, I'm just back from my dentist. It's not as an excuse to my silly pronunciation, still, the video will be in English, you must face it. The reason for this video is my friend Mike from far away land of Kansas and even having a portal directly to the land of Oz it does not help him having these HDG or high definition graphics they call them Sega uh, Genesis Genesis is Genesis Genies let's call those Genies I have no idea what's the plural for Genesis in contradiction to name high definition graphics the Sega has a far superior sound to all other models. This HDR is a first iteration of uh, Sega Genesis in USA. Uh, they have their design flaws, but which we'll be talking uh, about later. But the thing is, these HDG Segas were released in USA far before we had any Segas in Europe and Polar region. The problem we will be discussing today is not related to PAL Segas and not that important for us, still it must be addressed as it's very useful information for any console gamers. Now first let me explain you some things beside gaming consoles. You see this little thing in my hand? I have bent legs, but it doesn't matter. You probably notice these in every piece of equipment you see open. Most probably you've seen these attached to the heat sinks. Now this is called voltage regulator. What it does is it regulates voltage. There are several different kinds of them. They differ from size to shape and capabilities. So let me put these few away. Now let me explain how it works. Here are three legs. First is input, uh, let's say 10 volts goes in, this is ground and this is output. In this particular case it's 5 volts, this is for the reduction of voltage. In this leg Voltage comes in from mains or, or most probably from power adapter. These things are surprisingly reliable and uh, also uh, the output is very exact like it's stated on the box or description or anything. But uh, the voltage itself is quite unstable so uh, the best uh, advice is to use some capacitors on uh, input and output. Now, for my Arduino projects, I use voltage regulators like this. These are stacked together. Here, I took out a single one. You see, it already has uh, some capacitors on it and also it has the regulator itself. You see, there's the base where it uh, just solders for the fixation and these are the same three legs. It's just a different shape, but uh, it does exactly the same. It's whole setup and it's much easier to use these. Also, they are dirt cheap, it's like a few cents. So I, I don't even bother anymore to use these in case I need for my Arduino project. See, in Arduino I need those to convert usual 5 volts to 3.3. Now, you probably have noticed that different video gaming devices use different power adapters and the output of those varies from 5 to 10, 12, 13, 18 volts even. So now, you see, here is a Sega Mega Drive adapter and they state that the output is 10 volts. Actually, this is not a precision instrument and the power it outputs fluctuates from 9 to 13, even 15 uh, volts. Uh, even if it's stated 10 volts on the adapter itself and that is completely okay. You see, the most video gaming systems use 5 volts internally. This exact device is of course Sega Mega Drive, Model 1. 
most of it, 99% of it, uses 5 volts. So, how do they get 5 volts? As explained before, they use these voltage regulators. You see, these are exactly the same I showed you previously. See, it's a little bit different. This one is 3.3 volt, but it, it doesn't matter. Sometimes I get the question, what will happen if you attach a power adapter uh, with greater voltage and same, same amperes to the uh, console? You see, nothing will happen. It will work just fine. But, as usual, there are several buts. It is not dangerous, but these voltage regulators, how they work, reduction of the voltage comes for a price, and the price is heat. You see, these voltage regulators convert uh, excess voltage to the heat using special effects done by resistors in them. This huge heatsink is there for a cause. When people designed this first, they were not aware of these expansion options they have. But if one fine day you will wish to assemble full tower of power, you notice the heating problems. When you attach 32X with its own power supply, and also you attach Sega CD with its own power supply, what you get is three power supplies connected indirectly to this Sega. Every later models has somehow addressed this issue, but HDG model, there are some voltage leaking issues. Like these converters must work harder. It somehow gets extra voltage to them, so they need to convert like more like 20 volts. These converters, they are quite safe. You see, uh, they have uh, inbuilt uh, safety precaution devices that lets them turn out as soon as they get too hot. Now, what happens when Sega gets too hot? I cannot replicate this on this exact Sega, as we are lucky to live in PAL region and have uh, these awesome devices just with the wrong speed and uh, lame 50 Hz frequency, but let's not talk about that. What happens is that the uh, entire area inside of Sega heats up and what you get is uh, really serious uh, visual glitches on the screen like artifacts, like flickering and uh, messing with the sprites. You do not want to have this. And my friend Mike has this issue, so I promised him to test how this can be solved. Now, one might ask, how can this be fixed? And there are several options. He already tried first of those. First option is the most obvious one. It's introduction of better heat dispensing system, like adding heat sinks, changing thermal compound, uh, but actually nothing helps. It gets so hot that it's, it doesn't help, even a little bit. Maybe like 2-3 degrees, but that doesn't change the fact that the uh, whole Sega inside gets scorching hot and glitches. Also, by increasing heat dispensing, there is an option to add an extra external fan. But uh, you see, we do not even consider adding active cooling, because this would be total blasphemy. Introducing moving parts to the solid-state console must be considered as a felony. Second option, I thought of myself, and most probably my good friends who are very good at electronics, maybe they can comment on this, but my idea is like, it's like uh, income is approximately 13 volts, so it could vary, it could vary up to, let's say, it should be measured up to like, let's say 12, 20, uh, in addition of uh, Sega CD and 32X. So what my idea is, uh, here is power income, so let's just say we put one voltage regulator that regulates from 20 to uh, let's say 15, then second one that regulates from 
15 to uh, let's say 10 these increases could be even smaller and then leave the originals from 10 to uh, 5 so you see it would be like uh, these each of these would have to reduce approximately 5 volts and that is they are designed for and that is what that heatsink is designed for my whole idea is about the fact that the heat created by voltage regulator is in geometric progression it's like so uh, not like so it's um, read on arithmetic versus geometric progression if you must uh, but I, I think this would be viable solution still I'm not 100% sure this one should be tested now the third option are buck converters and at last we've got to the whole point of this video buck converter is a voltage regulator that uses principles of switching I know nothing about it's also known as step down converter what it does is by switching using semiconductors and mind-boggling trickery reduces the voltage but not for the cost of heating up so Eureka one might yell but no not so fast not so easy again there is a problem you see this piece of thing introduces something that is called voltage ripple and at the same time according to numerous sources on the internet introduces serious electrical interferences in everything it is connected to or is in proximity of some folks say that you can reduce these interferences by adding capacitors in there on the way to these and out now this exact piece of Asian engineering is a buck converter that as a manufacturer states is a perfect substitute to voltage regulator no more heat no more problems just use this and this is what I will try to test whether there is actual visually noticeable effect on image or noticeable decrease in quality of sound when video game console voltage regulators are replaced by these uh, step down converters. Is a buck worth a buck or it's all about Chinese marketing? In theory if it works screw heat sinks and we're good, in practice I doubt that. Why would anyone use VRs if buck converter is so good? Ok, now I quit my jabbering and let's get to work. Now, this is my setup. It's uh, connected, this Sega is connected to the TV set. And also it's connected via Elgato to my PC. A little time for advertisement. You see this little piece of equipment? This is adapter made by me. It's called MD4. It allows you to play Sega Mega Drive using PlayStation 4 controller. Ain't it great? Please visit lauraiswordpress.com. There will be a link below this video. Okay, well, I'm not gonna pretend it was easy. Somehow I managed to get all the voltage regulators out. Okay, now let's test this. Maybe you can notice serious buzzing in the background of uh, audio. It's because of my super cheap upscaler it introduces this interference in the video and audio but uh, we have to do with it and it's not that serious okay here you see the jungle strike i do not see serious problems i see a vertical line scrolling from down to up from time to time it's it's barely visible now do you see those lines they're clearly visible but you see that's not the problem with the buck converters let me remove the upscaler watch this see? no lines the same sharpness everything looks the same heat these things get warm but it's like lukewarm it's not something to be considered definitely no, not heat sink requiring heat now as you can see it's back to sonic is there any difference hmm. you see 
I might be considered as totally musically deaf, but the picture is razor sharp. I'm trying to be super picky, but I, I, I really don't get it. I don't get any problem, any issues, any difficulties, any... I have no complaints. I'm not sure I want to replace those voltage converters back. The difference is... I don't see any difference. My final verdict on this is I can't be bothered to put back original voltage regulators. So, now you know. Completely flawless. Play Sega, put back converters in, play with Laura's adapters for Mega Drive controller, and play Mortal Kombat, the second one. And don't play with Cage, everyone knows you must play with Dryden. And the fun part is, look, Sega is completely cold, totally cold, not even warm anywhere. And I have this now. Okay, bye everyone. Now this exact piece of Chinese, now this exact piece of Asian engineering, now this exact piece of Asian, now this exact piece of Asian,